Ezra chapter 9. Now when these things were done, come into Jerusalem, count everything up. Make sure everything was accounted for. The princes came to me, saying, The people of the Israel and the priests, the Jews, the priests, and the Levites, have not separated themselves from the people of the land. Doing according to their abominations, even the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, and the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. This is Solomon's trouble. They're married unto other races. They have adopted intermarriage, race mixing. Let's see what the Bible says. We're going to read black and white. I'm not going to add nothing to the word of God. So the princes came to Ezra. We got this problem. Verse 2. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves. Canaanites, Hadites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Amorites, Moabites, Egyptians, and Amorites. And for their sons, so that the holy seed Israel has mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers have been chief in this trespass. Everybody's doing it. Let's see Ezra's re reaction. And when I heard this thing, verses 1 and 2, I rent my garment, tore his garment out, pictures tearing the flesh and my mantle and plucked off the hair off my head. Kind of a weird reaction. And of my beard and sat down astonished. That's the first time that word shows up, astonished. To be like a stone. What? <laughs> What's happened? What is the news? What's going on? He thought he failed. Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembleth at the words of the God of Israel. They have great fear. They're trembling because of the transgressions of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonished unto the evening sacrifice, 6 p.m. And at the evening sacrifice, 6 p.m., we'll offer that lamb. I arose up from my heaviness, the first time that word shows up. And having rent my garment, very red, and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread my hands out uh, up yeah, my hands unto the Lord my God and said, Oh my God. There you go. Those are words when something amazing just happened. Usually to Agony or actually a surprise. I am ashamed. Very interesting. The Jews have married other people. It's against the law. I am ashamed and blush. That's the first time that blush shows up in the Bible. Americans don't blush no more. Where your face turns red and bears me. To lift up my face to thee, my God. I am praying to God and I can't even lift my head up to God. And it's not what Ezra's done. It's what the people's done. For our iniquities. I read black and white. Are increased over our head. And our trespass is grown up unto the heaven. He's confession. Since the days of our fathers, 
we have been in great trespass unto this day. True. And our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered to the hand of the kings of the lands, Assyria, Babylon, Moabites, books of Judges, I mean the book of Judges, to the sword, war, to captivity, to a spoil, to confusion of faith, as it is this day. <clears throat> Judges, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel. And now for a little space, grace has been showed us from the Lord our God. We're, we're back home. The temple is built to leave us a remnant. That's a very important word in the Bible for the Jewish people, remnant. To escape. It's going to happen in the tribulation period. And to give us a nail in his holy place. That our God may lighten our eyes. Give him light. And give us little reviving. In our bondage. For we were bondmen. Yet our God has forsaken us in our bondage. But have excited, extended mercy unto us. In the sight of the kings of Persia. Remember uh, Cyrus said go back. And to give us a reviving. That reviving verse 8. And that reviving verse 9. Is the only two places that word shows up. God gave the reviving. And God allowed Cyrus to give the reviving. And people want a revival without God. And they think that their great preaching is going to bring a revival. The great revivals that happened throughout England and happened in America is because people's hearts were tendered and they feared God. And they lost sight that God is a loving, fearful God of our sins and wrath and judgment. And you go tell them about fear and wrath of judgment today and some Christian will come up to you. That's not what Jesus would do. You're mean and cruel and will drive people away. Reviving to set up the house of our God. And to repair the desolation. That's the first time that word shows up. The abomination lies desolate, Jesus says about the Antichrist. We're also seeing tribulation passage here. They're up to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. It's kind of funny, it says a wall, and today they just got the, the wailing wall. And now, oh our God, oh my God, oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servants, the prophets, saying, The land unto which we go to possess it is an unclean land, with the filthiness of the people of the land, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to the other with their uncleanness. That's why God gave them the land. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, they have all defiled that land of idolatry, of imagery, of murder, of killing their children, of this abominable sin, which Israel picked up and started doing. Now, therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons marriage. This is Leviticus 20, 10 to 23. Leviticus 10, I mean, yeah, Leviticus 20, 10 through 23. We've only got a couple verses after this. And there, now, therefore, give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth forever, that ye may be strong and eat the good of the land, Israel, and leave it for inheritance to your children for thee. Israel, Jewish people, beyond a shadow of a doubt. And after all that is come upon us for our evil deeds, 
and for our great trespass, seeing that our seeing that thou our God has punished us less than our iniquities deserve. I mean, deserve. Excuse me. That's the only time that word deserve shows up. We hear that all the time. You get less than what? That's out of the Bible. It has given us such deliverance at this. Should we again break thy commandments and join a family by marriage? That's exactly what Solomon did. With the people of these abominations. Wouldest not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us? So that there should be no remnant nor escaping. Only time that word shows up. Sounds like Ezra's having a big hard time problem here. The sin is intermarriage. O Lord God of Israel. O my God. O our God. O Lord God of Israel. Thou art righteous. For we remain yet escaped. As it is this day, behold, we are before thee in our trespass, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. We've sinned. Now, let's look at three verses here. Well, Numbers 36, 6. Numbers 36, 6. Now, there's one place where many preachers go, and where, uh, as you go to number 36, where Aaron and Miriam have a problem with the Ethiopian wife that Moses married. And they see there, you know, she got the leprosy and God scolded them out. Yeah, for ranking on the preacher that God called, it had nothing to do with the marriage. Number 36, 1 Samuel 6. This is the thing which the Lord does command concerning the daughters of Zolapah, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. It sounds good. Only to the family of the tribe of their fathers shall they marry. The people of Israel, if you're of Judah, you married of Judah. If you're Benjamin, you married Benjamin. If you're of Levi, you married Levi. If you're of Aaron, you married of Aaron. There was no crossing of the tribes for Israel. 1 Corinthians 7, 39. We're going to look at the New Testament. And Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 is more like, I'd rather you not marry. The man who wrote the, the church epistles. But chapter 7, he said, now listen, if you do marry, you, you haven't sinned. But verse 39, to the church, to a Christian. The wife is bound by law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, semicolon, only in the Lord. Paul takes it for granted of a Christian. You're to marry another Christian. Now, if you're married and you're not a Christian before we ever get to 1 Corinthians 7, there's a case there where an unsaved and a saved, but that is, they were two unsaved people that got married and one of them got saved, the other one wouldn't get saved. It's taken for granted that a Christian would marry another Christian. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, the last couple of verses here. I'm going to make just a statement here that people are different colors. And I'm not. I'm going to make a statement that's not written in stone either. I'm just going to make an observation and leave it, I mean, whatever. But God has devised people of different colors. I would just assume that you stay with your colors not to be prejudiced or anything. I mean, I don't mind, you know, seeing a mixed couple, but what's the Bible say? Acts 17, 26. For he has made one blood all nations of men 
for to dwell on all the face of the earth. Any blood will fit any race of people. Male and female blood, white blood, Indian blood, Native American blood, black blood, Russian blood, German blood, it all fit. Okay? But look what he says here. And has determined the times before appointed. So before time, God had disappointed. And the bounds of their habitation. There are bounds for the people where to live. God was angry with the, with the Hamites that went in and stayed in the land of Canaan and didn't go down to a place called Africa. Shem went to Asia, Southeast Asia. That's where he dwelt. Japheth went into Europe and then he became the adventurer. Now why? That they should seek the Lord. If happy they might feel after him and find him. Though he be not far from every one of us. That boundary was set up to find God. When you cross those boundaries, God says, they're not going to look for me no more. There are people who will cross over to another country just for the benefits of that country, and they won't look to God, their maker, anymore. The Mexicans were not battling or coming to America because of the God of America. They're coming for the money of America. We used to, during the Philadelphian church aid, we used to send missionaries out with the gospel. Now today, the Laodicean church, which means of the people, the rights of the people, people are coming to get what they can, and they're doing it without God. People who come to America, right or wrong, I don't care, They're not coming to America to look for God. They're looking for America for the benefits. And while I'm here in America and I have opportunity, I will preach the gospel to anybody that will come within my voice to hear the gospel. And we've come a long way from I'm hearing from great preachers that, have been, that are older than me who have served the Lord in my younger years and years I wasn't even thought of. People had a great respect. They had a great thing to receiving and listening to the gospel. That's not so today. Israel, God's people, had a standard of marriage. We are God's people. We are the children of God. As far as one standard we have that Paul puts before us is, you're to marry another Christian. Is it right or wrong? I'm not going to say anything. I don't know. For a Christian, I know one thing. Marry another Christian. 